Ranked players, do you ever wonder if you're working on the wrong stuff? Let me tell you something. If you're playing Rocket League for an hour a day, or most likely more than that, and you are not seeing any progress or nearly as much progress as me, guess what? The problem is you are working on the wrong stuff. The reason is because in the last nine Rocket League seasons, I have averaged two ranked games per day because I spend most of my time making these videos and running the coaching company at the Grand Champ Bootcamp. And yet, I just hit a new peak rank of Grand Champ 3 that puts me in the top 20,000 players in this game playing roughly an hour a day. The reason I say this is not to flex, although... The reason is because I talk with players every day in Platinum, Diamond, Champ, you name it, that put in three times the hours as me and yet see half the results. So today I want to share with you exactly what you should learn and the order I would have learned mechanics if I could go back 4,000 hours to when I was making these videos back in high school. Don't show them the clips, Merch. Stop. Don't do it. Stop. And as a bonus, I'll show you updated proof throughout this video of me using these mechanics in lobbies this year. So that way, if you watch this, I guarantee you will improve faster. Let's get into it. Okay. Starting from the bottom below the tier list, first mechanic I would learn is controller. When I started out Rocket League, I didn't realize that controller and more specifically PS4 controller is the optimal setup for pro play. The reason I wish I would have done this when I started, because for those of you who don't know, I played 500 hours on KBM. Go to my old Minecraft channel. Actually, wait, wait, wait. Don't put that in the description. Don't go to my old Minecraft channel and you'll see me on the keyboard where it says ball cam hit space to turn on ball cam. It was terrible. Let me just tell you the reason KBM is not as optimal as controller. For those of you who don't know, is because you don't have access to your joysticks. So you don't have 360 degree movement for certain mechanics when it comes to steering, right? And when it comes to even things like air roll that like some pros like the Zen are using now, and we'll talk about that later in the list. But point is, if you can start programming your muscle memory with a controller on a PC setup, that is optimal performance. I just had to get that out of the way. Okay, getting into the real tier list, bronze through gold, the only mechanic is keybinds, AKA, settings. Most players make their first mistake before they even start learning mechanics by picking bad keybinds. So before you skip ahead, do not make the same mistake I did. Just copying a pro's controls and moving on and trying to learn mechanics is a mistake. The reason is because for those of you who don't know, when I got into the game, I copied a pro player's controls called Rizzo. You know, the one who's doing this dance. And what I didn't realize was that by copying Rizzo's controls, I would be putting my drive button on joystick. I have spent 4,000 hours basically ingraining a movement pattern that is not optimal at the highest ranks. Rizzo is no longer a pro. God bless Rizzo. But let me tell you, the keybind that I put there has impaired my ability to properly control my car on the ground. Now, I've learned how to work around it in some ways, but if I could go back, the first thing I would do, I'd watch a proper keybinds guide from a verified source. Like if you consider me good enough, great. So that way you know that your settings won't hold you back. Okay, jumping straight into platinum, I have a bold claim to make. You only need five mechanics to get out of platinum. Don't believe me? Hear me out, because these are the only five mechanics I used when I was doing my last Road to Grand Champ and that I use whenever I smurf against guys in private lobbies in private lobbies. It's so funny. I do this educational Smurf series where I play against players in my coaching program in private lobbies. And I always love reading the comments. I can't believe you're smurfing Luke. Like just watch the video. It's a private lobby. I said it in the intro. Anyways, number one, wave dash. The wave dash is a fundamental mechanic of Rocket League. And the reason I want you to learn wave dash is not because it's game changing. Like you could get diamond without knowing how to wave dash. Actually, wait, you could, but the reason I'm recommending it is just because it's so simple and so straightforward. And it's the first like quick win you can get when you learn Rocket League. So wave dashing will increase your speed. And it's probably the easiest mechanic for any beginner to learn. So start there. Mechanic number two, half flip. 
The reason half flips are so important is because most players in platinum are terrible at positioning. You'll drive to the wrong spot, and if you don't know how to get out of it, you will spend 10 seconds slowly backing up. Not ideal. Your high rank friends will not be impressed. Not only those things, but half flips will teach you how to air roll and flip cancel. I'll explain this more later at some of our high level mechanics, like speed flips and even some of our higher ranks, but these flip cancels are super important because when you get to high level aerial control, very oftentimes you'll want to hit a ball and then cancel your flip to recover. Or you'll want to like, for example, speed flip midair and cancel the flip in such a way that your nose stays up and you can follow it. Now I'll save this for some of the more advanced stuff later, but foundationally learning half flips. So that way you can one, learn how to flip cancel and two, learn air rolls and make sure that you have good air roll binds, whether it's air roll left or air roll right, or just using joystick air roll. Each of them is fine for platinum. Ugh. I'm uncoordinated. Half flips will teach you so many foundational skills. That's two of the five mechanics you need in platinum. Okay, stay with me. Mechanic number three, shooting. And by shooting, I really just mean power shots. Like, can you drive at the ball and jump and flip through it? Like not jump, hit it, and then flip after. Not flip first so that way like your hood smacks it. Hit the ball with the nose of your car and time your dodge. The reason this is so important is because the most powerful touch you can get in Rocket League is a touch where you're dodging through the ball. And so if you don't learn this basic timing, you're gonna struggle with all the later shots. Not just that, but let me tell you something honest about platinum players. And I don't say this to insult, I say this to teach. Platinum players, most of them can't hit the ball. They think they can hit the ball. They'll tell you they can air dribble in the YouTube comments, but they can't hit the ball. I don't recommend you do this, but if you're on offense, you can just literally sit at half field and let Platinums miss until you have an open net. Or if you're on defense, sit in your net and let the attack miss until the ball is free and then go for it. And if you can just do that and hit the ball when it's clean, free, and safe, you will get through Platinum. If you don't believe me, or if you think that won't work, it's probably because you don't know mechanic number four, going back post. Rather than learn how to save the ball backwards, which is hard and I recommend you do eventually, spoiler in diamond, why don't we just start by learning how to rotate back post? For the Platinums watching, if you don't know what back post is, the back post is the post opposite ball side. And the reason it's so important to be back post is because when you're positioned on your back post, every ball that's hit is in front of you. So guess what? You don't need shadow defense. You don't need backward saves because every ball is in front of you. If you go watch my old Road to Grand Champs, and by the way, this is why I stopped doing my Road to Grand Champs because I don't like doing this. But if you go watch those games, you will see me bully platinum players, like just bully them. We're out of platinum in like two episodes. And the reason for that is not because I was using crazy mechanics against them. I would just sit back post, they'd hit me the ball and then I'd save it. Or I'd wait middle and they'd throw the ball away and then I'd save it. So I guess here's what I'm trying to say. Is back post the optimal way to defend a good attacker who's dribbling the ball and flicking it? Absolutely not. In that case, you should shadow defend and we'll talk about that in a second. But the truth is, if you are playing in a platinum two lobby and somebody's dribbling on you, nine out of 10 times, they're gonna mess up their dribble, give you the ball or just whiff entirely. And then you will take the ball and score the free net so long as you're back post. Final mechanic for platinum, kickoffs. For some reason, most players don't think of kickoffs as a mechanic, but they are. I'm sick and tired of seeing bad kickoffs all the way up to champ in Rocket League. Like, this is unacceptable. If you join my Discord server and we're doing a one-on-one -on -one coaching session and I see you driving the whole way to the kickoff, get out, class canceled. <laughs> but jokes aside, if you want to rank up and you have a bad kickoff, what are we doing? I'm not saying you have to learn the speed flip in Platinum. We'll talk about when I think you should learn that later. Compared to what I usually see in Plat, which is like not even hitting the kickoff sometimes, I'll take front flip, front flip into the kickoff. You know, drive, front flip, drive, front flip into the kickoff, even though that's wrong. Optimally, even if you don't know how to speed flip, I'd rather you diagonal flip than side flip into the 50-50. That way you control it and maintain possession. But I'm not going to turn this into one of my kickoff tutorials. Anything but the drive kickoff. Learn in plat and you will get out of plat. I promise. Those five mechanics are all you need to get out of plat. Notice I didn't mention dribbling. Notice I didn't mention backward saves. Notice I didn't mention fast aerials even. Yes, I'm serious. I don't think you can or really should be fast aerialing in plat. I think you can double jump, but fast aerial, no, because these things all come later and I'm gonna try to convince you of why I would learn them later. Once again, this is what I would do and this is what I'm recommending for you. Moving up to 
Diamond. Once you get to Diamond, you'll probably hit your first wall of improvement. And when this happens, you have two options. Either option A, you can try to figure it out yourself, or B, you can save yourself some time and ask a higher ranked player. If you can relate, you might be a good fit to get one-on-one -on -one coaching with me and my team at the GrandChampBootCamp.com. At the GCB, we do paid one-on-one -on -one coaching for 18 plus players ranked Diamond and above. And trust me, I get it because when I was hard stuck earlier this year for over a year in Grand Champ 1, I started getting coaching. In March, I started working with our pro coach, Shock, and in less than 10 weeks, we turned things around and got me back up to Grand Champ 3. Shock is just one of our coaches currently available at the GCB, but as of the end of August, he's got 28 students actively training. So if you want one of his last 12 of 40 spots, send a message to my team Discord account with the keyword tier list one to get started. I'll have my Discord account first link in the description below. That is keyword tier list one to see if you qualify for one-on-one -on -one coaching, 18 plus only. Now back to the mechanics I wish I had learned in Diamond. If Platinum was the rank of just hit the ball period, then Diamond is the rank of hit the ball kind of where you want to hit it. Doesn't have to be accurate, but just kind of where you want to hit it. That's why first mechanic on the Diamond list, if I could go back and learn air roll shots. The reason air roll shots are so important is because they allow you to score even when your angle isn't good. Now, of course, I just recommend you position better. One of my favorite comments was from the, from the last tier list. What was it? The comment goes, bronze positioning, silver positioning, gold positioning, diamond positioning plus ground control, champ positioning plus air control, GC air control, SSL, you probably learned everything. This is one of my favorite. The reason this is so good is because it's true. If you just have better positioning, you barely need any mechanics to get to GC. But the reason I like air roll shots and that I and I wish I would have learned them sooner, I didn't learn them until like champ, is because air roll shots allow you to score from off angles. You can hit a ball that's coming at you from the right way left by air rolling to the right and then shooting left. Or you can hit a ball that's coming at you from the left way to the right by air rolling left and shooting to the right. I have a fundamental breakdown of this in my shooting tutorial and other shorts, but just remember, it's like Lightning McQueen. Sometimes you got to turn left to go right. Oh, right. That makes perfect sense. Turn right to go left. Yes. Thank you. Am I more like Doc or am I more like Lightning? I, I You know what? I'm Tomater. I feel like I'm more like Tomater. I'm here to help. I'm not the main character. You're the main character. I'm just here to help. Anyways, I digress. What what are we talking about? Air roll shots. Yes. So I'll put my favorite air roll shots on screen here and I'll keep including my favorite training packs. Air roll shots. We got to learn how to hit with placement and diamond. That's the first thing I would put. Second thing I'm going to put is dribbling. And no, I'm not talking about dribbling and flicks and diamond because honestly, you don't need that. I'm talking about the most underrated form of dribbling. Okay. Put the ball on your car, drive forward, single jump pop, like, like just hit jump and the ball goes up. You're looking at me like I'm speaking gibberish right now. This is what works in diamond. You don't need to learn how to flick. Like flicks are great. Don't get me wrong. We'll talk about those in champ and how I think you should train them. But the reason I like dribbling so much and just single jump pops in diamond is because it doesn't take a lot of control and you can mess it up and still pop it over the opponent. So start with just dribbling, simple, single jump pops, double jump pops. Thank me later. Mechanic number three, wall play. Once you know how to do basic air roll adjustments using joystick air roll to flatten your car and wave dash and half lip and all these things, wall play is very helpful. We don't really need to know how to control the ball. I just want you to be able to clear it if it does come your way, like off your sidewall or in your corner, let's say. When it comes to wall play, my recommendation, if you're starting out, keep it simple. I wish I would have done this. Before you understand air roll control, just practice getting your car back to the neutral position, back to the grounded position off the walls. So like if you're in free play and you're driving up the left wall, just practice air rolling left after you jump off the left wall to get your car flat. Or if you're on the right wall, practice jumping off the wall, then air rolling right to get your car flat. Before you have aerial control, if you can just find ways to get your car back in positions you understand, it will help you so much in the learning process. And I wish I would have done this. This first. Speaking of things I messed up and wish I would have done first, aerial car control. Before you learn air roll, please, I'm not talking about air roll. Everybody's like, oh, are we going to learn how to spin? Not yet. I want you to practice basic aerial car control. I made the mistake of not doing this. When I got to diamond, I saw all the pros air rolling. And so I bound air roll left and went straight into rings maps. And you know what? I guess I figured it out in like a couple hundred hours, but I would have learned air roll so much faster if I could go back and change this. If I could go back, instead of trying to learn air roll right away, I would have learned three things before I learned air roll. One, fly upside down. Two, fly left. And three, 
fly right. What do I mean by that? Go into free play, practice flying from goal to goal, and instead of having your wheels forward and your hood facing your screen, practice getting up and down the field with your car upside down, air roll it over. Then practice rotating just 90 degrees so your car is kind of sideways, practice that. You know like how when you started the game, you had to learn like how to control your car using ball cam? Well, when you start to rank up, you need to learn how to control your car. Even when you have ball cam on, just now your car is facing sideways or upside down instead of forwards. You just have to train your eyes where to look, even if your camera isn't facing in the same direction as your car. Does that make sense? Hopefully that analogy made sense. You have to get your bearings. And if you do this, this is what a former top 100 player coached me on and told me to do. After I got the champ and after I kind of had good air roll control, he made me do this and it skyrocketed my air roll control without even training air roll, just because I learned the basics first. So learn how to fly upside down, left side, right side, in free play, then of course in rings, if you have PC access, that's the next best place to go before you learn directional air roll. And we'll talk about directional air roll in a second, but trust me, I wish I would have done this if I could go back in time. Next up, fast aerials. If you're in diamond, sometimes the ball will be in the air and you can't just sit on the ground forever. I get it. Fast aerials are one of the most game changing mechanics because just like speed flips, which we'll talk about in a second, if you know how to fast aerial and you're playing against a team who doesn't, you just become God. Like in my diamond games, I would take off later. I would get worse reads and it didn't matter because I knew how to fast aerial properly. And I knew the correct order, like not double jump, but I did the jump tilt boost. Like as I teach you guys in my fast aerial tutorial, because I just knew how to do this right, I became God among diamonds. And so if you want to become God among diamonds, spend some time getting this muscle memory down. It's not as hard as it looks, but it's so, so impactful. And if you play players who don't, just like if you have speed flip, you'll win every kickoff. If you have the fast aerial and you're racing to a ball, you can get started later. You can have worse reads. It's just so helpful. And there will be times in diamond where yeah, the ball's in front of your net. You got to put a hand up. Sometimes you just got to try to block it. You need fast aerials in diamond. That's at least when I would have learned them. Last two mechanics in diamond, speed flip. When should you learn speed flips? Two years ago, I would have said you could probably wait until champ. And I think that's actually what I said in one of my tier lists. I think speed flips are a diamond mechanic. And this is why many people are speed flipping in diamond. Now, do you need speed flips in order to get to champ? No, but compared to a lot of other things, they are much lower difficulty and such high utility. I know speed flips can look intimidating to learn and like with everything in Rocket League, it is, especially if you don't have the help of a coach and you just kind of have to rely on YouTube videos and just try to follow along. But if you can learn speed flips, if you can spend just seven days, you probably get your first speed flip within just a day of watching my tutorial and you could probably get pretty consistent within seven days and basically automatic within a month. Learn speed flips. They will pay off for the rest of your Rocket League career. They're such a good mechanic to learn and that's why I keep pushing them up and I keep saying learn speed flips now in diamond. Finally, last mechanic in diamond, shadow defense. Once you get to diamond, players are going to start dribbling and some will be able to flick. So yes, you shouldn't always just sit back post. That's the incorrect way to defend. If you're ever defending somebody who's mechanical and who's controlling the ball, we want to get same side and shadow. The reason shadowing is so important is because it allows you to save the ball with more time. Because instead of driving at the attacker, you're driving with them. And so if they shoot the ball, you have more time to react, more time to recover, more time to read the ball, and you can hit it with momentum into your corner, clear it to the side and follow up. Unlike saving the ball on your goal line or back post, which can be much riskier. So you can use this diamond defense pack or any of the other shadow defense packs I'm showing on screen now. That will be my last mechanic for diamond. First off, redirects. Redirects are going in the champ two rank. Put these below the entire tier list merch. Redirects are terrible. Champ players, I don't want to see you learning redirects. Jokes aside, redirects are not the worst thing, but I have a very strong stance against learning redirects. And the reason is because I see so many champ rank players ignoring important stuff like flicks, like backboard defense, like bounce dribbles, like power side cuts, even like air dribbles to practice the Justin crazy redirect training packs. The reason I feel so passionately about this is because I used to be that kid. Like I was in high school, just spamming redirect packs in champ. And it's like, you want to know why you're stuck in champ? It's because you're spamming redirect packs and like you can't do the basics. So realistically, where should redirects go? I mean, they should go in like, I would argue grand champ because really, why are you positioning up field for a redirect in champ? Like, come on, they're not going to hit you with the pass. But just for, uh, just for the lulls, I'm, I'm going to put them below the tier list. Terrible. 
Redirects, get him out of my face. Mechanic number two, or the first real mechanic in champ, catches. And warning, before we get into catches and the rest of the champ mechanics, champ is where this tier list might get a bit overwhelming. We've got a lot of stuff to cover. And if you just don't know what champs are doing in 2024, keep watching. But if you know what you need to do, you just don't know where to start. Chances are you don't need the rest of this tier list. What you need is one-on-one -on -one advice. If you didn't know, most players I talk to get coaching between Diamond and Champ. My team at the Grand Champ Bootcamp does one-on-one -on -one coaching for 18 plus players ranked Diamond and above. And as of the end of August, we've got 109 total students actively coaching with us. So if you're feeling stuck and you want to try something new, DM my team Discord account with the keyword tier list two for one-on-one -on -one coaching. I'll have my team Discord account first link in the description below. That's keyword tier list two to see if you qualify for one-on-one -on -one coaching, 18 plus only. Now on to catches and the rest of the champ max. If platinum was the rank of hitting the ball hard and diamond was the rank of hitting the ball accurately, champ is the rank of controlling the ball. At some point, you have to learn how to stop just sending away possession to your opponents. Because if you send the ball to a good opponent, they're just going to take it, control it, and then score on you more often than not. So once you get to champ, I want you to start practicing catches. A fantastic pack I used to train this was Verge's dribble training. There's a ton of really good ones you can do, but learn catches first because catches will improve your dribbling so, so much. will make it faster for you to transition. And I remember when I did my last educational smurf, the players in champ that I was playing against were telling me like the difference between how quickly I can catch the ball is why I'm scoring on them. And that's all down to catches. I mean, check out the clips. On that note, the second thing I want you to learn once you learn catches and champ, practice your flicks. It's very important that we just learn how to quick flick, right? A lot of champs and a lot of low rank players are gonna early challenge you. And so if they're early challenging you, you can either one, throw your hands up, say, I can't rank up. These people are monkeys. They early challenge me every time. I never get as much space as you do, Luke, at your rank. That's my favorite. These champ players are so much faster at my rank. But if you want to actually improve and rank up, guess what? Rather than complain about other people early challenging you and not giving you space, get faster at catching the ball, get faster at flicking the ball, and just drill quick flicks in free play. This will help you so, so much through champ and even on the push to grand champ. Next mechanic in champ, directional air roll. When I first learned mechanics in champ, I started with all the stuff like air dribbles and double taps and ceiling shots. But if I could go back, what I would do before learning any of those things is start with directional air roll. The reason is because when you get better at direct directional air roll first, all of a sudden your double taps are better, more accurate. All of a sudden your air dribbles are better. All of a sudden your flip resets are better because you can actually control your car in the air. You don't have to learn both air rolls, but learning one directional air roll will unlock so much aerial control and so many aerial mechanics. In 2024, it's pretty much mandatory at the high ranks to know at least one. So if I could go back, I would have started it in champ before all this other stuff. This other stuff includes air dribbles, double taps and ceiling shots. Are they useful in champ? Sure. And yes, you can probably start learning them at this rank because sometimes they are the best way to score at this rank because you need to know how to control the ball. But still, reminder, most of the stuff on this list is more important. And by more important, I mean you will use it more. So if I was coaching me in champ, I would say, yeah, let's learn some solo plays. But just because I know how many of you guys are air dribbling and double tap, instead of doing all the good stuff, just I'm just going to put a warning here. Like just just because I put air dribbles doesn't mean like the only thing we learn in champ is air dribbles. Like if you're stuck in champ, you might not need just air dribbles. Like you could do other stuff still. Two mechanics that I really do want you to practice though, like jokes aside that I think are probably the most underrated potentially on this entire tier list, bounce dribbles and power side cuts. If you've ever thought that you're inconsistent or that your first touches aren't good, the problem might be because you're just inconsistent and well, like we should do things to get consistent, like maybe do training routines and et cetera, et cetera. But if you want a mechanic, you can practice to get more consistent, practice power side. The reason is because power side allows you to make more precise turns on the ground. And not only is it good when you're recovering, like you should always hold power side when you land. And many of you guys know this stuff that I've talked about. But what people don't realize is power side allows you to get good first touches on the ball. It's what allows you to get a precise dribble started, a precise catch, a precise cut and take the ball across the field. And yet for how good they are, it's just not fun to practice. Like nobody wants to go into free play and do my hot potato drill that I talked about in my free play drills video. And yet the people who do every time get so much results. This is one of the only mechanics in champ that I didn't learn, but I wish I would have. Finally, two more mechanics in champ. First one, 
backboard defense. If players are going to start air dribbling on you, we got to learn how to use the backboard. So many champ players forget to rotate back post and forget to use the backboard entirely. And we'll just push up to their front post and wonder why they can't defend air dribbles. You don't need to be a pro player to defend a champ air dribble. You just need to go on the backboard. So don't forget that just because you're in champ doesn't mean you should just all of a sudden start rotating into the middle of the net and skip back post. Like if I could give one recommendation for game sense for champ players, it's don't think you're better than back post. Continue to rotate back post and continue to use the backboard because now you actually have a reason to use it. Like you can use the backboard. So don't push up to the middle of your net. Stay back post, practice backboard defense and use the backboard, especially against aerial attacks. Last mechanic in champ, and I don't know if this counts, but fakes. When I play lower ranked players, I think one of the reasons that I'm so effective against them is because everything works. When you get to the rank of champ, everybody's so focused on playing faster they forget they could just fake. So my go-to move, if I ever get the ball in open space and I'm in a one-on-one -on -one and I don't know what to do, put the ball on my car, drive towards the net, make it look like I'm going to do something. I don't know what I'm going to do. And guess what? Hit the brakes, let the ball fall off of your car. You just let it fall off of your car and you take a low 50. You let it fall off of your car and just let them woo, fly off to the side. Now, can you fake all the time? No, you probably won't score, but talk about underrated mechanics you don't have to always try to flick, especially like in front of your net. You can just put the ball in front of your net, low 50-50. Start a dribble, let it fall off, fake. So, so effective. Do this and you will literally score three times as much in champ. First mechanic in grand champ, pinches. Can you technically learn these sooner? Sure. But if I think about it, pinches really only started to be useful for me in grand champ. The reason is because once you're in grand champ, you start to understand when you should control the ball. But sometimes you're just going to be late or you're going to be beat out of position. In these cases, sometimes pinching the ball can buy you the time you need or clear the ball or like you could pre-jump, fly up to the ball like I showed in my like seven meta mechanics video and pinch it before the opponent gets to it to like shut down an aerial attack. Those use cases of pinches really become effective in grand champ. Second mechanic, doomsy dishes. If you're ever on an offensive breakaway and you need to score fast, a doomsy dish, aka scoring the ball from your opponent's backboard can be useful. It's just a sort of aerial adjustment that you have to learn. And I do use these a lot in grand champ. Mechanic number three, squishy saves. This just makes you able to recover from the aggressive plays that you're going to want to use in grand champ. Squishy saves, you should learn. And then advanced flicks, like 45 degree flicks, 90 degree flicks. No, I'm not talking about musty flicks. Like I thought I needed to learn musty flicks to rank up and I learned them and guess what? I'm still grand champ three. Like they're not the secret, but 45 degree flicks I do think are underrated, especially in one-on-one -on -one situations. If you get good at these, some of your shots will just become unsavable. Sleeper mechanic, you may be surprised about ground to air dribble. I saw a comment about ground to air dribbles being good in champ. And once again, do I think they are good in champ? Of course. But the truth is most champ players can't even do a good wall to air dribble. Like they think they can, but they can't. So I would master the wall to air dribble in champ. And then one thing that has helped me load, like actually this is probably the single most important mechanic in the grand champ list, ground to air dribble setups. Specifically this training pack called realistic air dribbles. My coach shock at the grand Grand Champ Bootcamp gave me this pack in March, and I used this pack and this pack alone to hit my new peak rank of 1709 Grand Champ 3, right? Having these realistic setups is so, so important because when you get to the higher ranks, you're not going to get time to take the ball to the sidewall. And so if you can start an air dribble from midair or start a flip reset or grab a flip reset literally out of the air or put the ball on your car and go from instead of just flicking the ball to actually air dribbling it across the field, so, so effective. Ground air dribbles must learn in Grand Champ. I wish I would have learned these sooner, not in champ, but earlier in Grand Champ 1, as opposed to like being hard stuck Grand Champ 2 for a year and then learning them. Anyways, uh, another mechanic, passing. I don't know if passing is a mechanic, but I'm putting it in Grand Champ. The reason I'm putting it in Grand Champ is because in my Road to GC series, I didn't pass at all. And by passing, I mean like relying on my teammates. Like sometimes I'd hit the ball off the backboard and rotate back. And if they score, they score. But like, I would never have a solo play opportunity and then pass it to them just because it's so risky at the low ranks. Once you get to the higher ranks and mechanics are more consistent, passing makes more sense. But I don't like deliberately pass when I'm solo queuing at least. I'm just saying what worked for me when I was doing my road to grand champ. And just from a risk reward standpoint, I don't think it's worth it. Maybe I'll change my view on this later as champs become more consistent. But as long as champ twos are consistent as champ twos are, I'm not passing. Second to last mechanic in grand champ, the fancy wave dashes, the wall dash, the zap dash, the Mina flip, whatever the other dashes that comes out are. I've learned them all. I think they all give you a little bit of a benefit besides just looking cool. But yeah, in grand champ, eh, maybe a small edge. Maybe it's like a point 
two percent gain it really doesn't help that much but if you want to learn them in grand champ that's where i would i would do it and that's kind of what i did but the last most important mechanic and this is one that i'm going to eat my words on guys flip resets don't get me wrong i think flip resets like if i could go back i would still only start them in grand champ once i got air dribbles and double taps and ceiling shots down but i spent too long you know trying to not learn flip resets and like prove to people you don't need flip resets to rank up the truth is once you get to like grand champ and the backboard defense is good most opponents will stop a cookie cutter air dribble and so you need some direction change on your shot whether that's somehow getting your flip like on a ceiling shot or going for a double tap or, or, or something you need some sort of like redirect or misdirection and flip resets you heard it here first i wish i would have learned them sooner i would still only wait until grand champ one but i spent too much time as a grand champ two literally grand champ two not knowing how to flip reset in 2024 i would say flip resets are my last essential grand champ mechanic finally moving on to ssl and really i should say grand champ three plus because like i'm currently grand champ three and i think i'm gonna get to ssl soon but i'm not quite there yet so actually let me create a separate tier just for grand champ three and ssl or maybe just put this on the end of grand champ i'll just tell you guys what i'm working on right now currently i've peaked grand champ three so about 100 mr 10 wins away from ssl and i went to my coach the other day shock and i was like hey shock I, I don't know what i need to get to ssl i think i need another air roll and he said do you really need another air roll tell me why you need another air roll and after talking we decided i didn't need air roll what i actually needed was just more advanced aerial control and so i'm going to put two mechanics here in grand champ 3 that i'm now working on that shock literally prescribed to me and this is why i'm such an advocate for coaching guys like if it wasn't for talking with shock i would have probably spent hundreds of hours trying to learn another air roll just because i see pros learning it when that's not what i need right now instead shock told me two things wall stops and dodge control i'll explain what these are because they're kind of advanced mechanics they don't really have names yet but there are two really good training packs from the pro coach kev pert that help with this wall stops are these like two touch wall plays where like you'll pop the ball up to yourself on the wall and then follow it up the reason these are so important is because sometimes in the high ranks you'll need to jump for a ball but you don't have a good touch on it and so being able to do a wall stop and stay on the ball or hit it up to the wall follow it up yourself this is what pros do that like just normal grand champs can't do yet and so it's one of the biggest separating factors right now the second one is dodge control many high ranked players can get a cookie cutter air dribble setup in free play what they can't do is what happens when the ball is kind of far off the wall what happens when the ball is falling down or awkward this is when you need to use dodges neutral jumps speed flips midair to continue an aerial solo play from bad setups and so the two things that i'm working on in order to become just more potent and get better at scoring because that's honestly what i need to get to ssl at this point wall stops and dodge control finally moving on to the ssl tier here goes everything that you are probably shocked i didn't mention musty flicks you don't need them until you're ssl i learned them and i'm still grand champ so if i could go back i wouldn't have learned them until ssl i mean they are fun they don't make me look better in the clips but anyways double flip resets guess what champ freestylers you don't need these to get ssl i like once again i'm just saying what i would do because i spent so much time learning double flip resets and this really isn't what held me back both directional air rolls some pros at the high high levels like rettles he's picking up a second air roll i know many other pros like i think abjack's picking up a second air roll a lot of them are learning both air rolls now just because some of the super mechanical pros have proven it's a small edge and the pros need every edge they can get but for most of you you don't need two directional air rolls so if you know one right now and you're debating like me a couple months ago do i need another air roll answer according to my pro coach shock no he's got 10,000 hours in the game he's 2000 mmr he only has one air roll i don't think you need both unless you want by the way once again i'm not your dad okay those were my best mechanics to learn first in 2024 tier list hopefully now you know where to start click this playlist to find mechanics tutorials for whatever you want to learn i've got speed flips fast aerials half flips wave dashes even air dribbles and flip resets whatever you need to learn playlist on screen click that and i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching